our first studio vlog of 2024. I know the last time that I had my fireplace going, it was really loud background noise. So I got a chest mic for when I'm down here in the winter time because it's cold down here and I can't give up being cold to make videos. Hopefully this chest mic is working a little bit better. If you're wondering what the fuzzy thing is, that's what that is. And it's very weird to wear, but it's gonna make the sound better. So before we get started with the studio vlog, I just wanted to talk about the new year and what I want out of this new year and what I want or am hoping from the new year. Like you guys know, I have been running my jewelry business for the last three years and I would be lying if I said I didn't want this to be my full-time job. I've been using all of you know, this time to just invest in my tools and you know, this is a really expensive road to go down and business to have. So I've been, I guess, using the fact that I have to have a full-time job to my advantage and just investing in my tools, which is a good thing, but I really want to do this full-time. And I think last year was the first year that I could really see that happening and starting this YouTube channel and growing with you guys, I just feel like I can do it. I had so many changes in my life last year. We moved back to the States. My husband got out of the military. I had to close my business from the summertime into the fall. So I was closed for a lot of that time because we were moving and I didn't feel like I was making any progress and I couldn't film any content. I didn't film any content between, you know, when I was moving because all of my stuff was being shipped. So I just felt like I didn't do as good of a job as I could have. Even once I got my studio back and all of my tools back, I, you know, moved to a new state, started a new job, started another new job and moved again all within three months. We moved twice and I had, I started a new job within two or three months of moving here. And so I was like under an immense amount of stress and I honestly have had like no energy for my business. I've had like the want and the desire to like make things and to cast and to do all these things. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate because I think a lot of you guys also work a full-time job and do jewelry or you have your side hustle. And it is really hard to do that after work, especially when you have a job that's like mentally and emotionally draining every day. And I come home and I am like extremely physically exhausted and tired. And I let that get in the way of my business. I think at the end of the year, I let it get in the way and I let it like honestly like beat me down and I don't want to do that this year because I feel like the work that I have put in, I was starting to see it pay off. And whenever I wasn't working between when I quit my job and when we were moving, I had a two month gap in time where I could like really put my all into my business. I had my studio, I didn't have my job, we were about to move and I saw so much growth and so much like so many sales and I know it's possible so to like slack even a little and I know I say slack I was I've had a lot going on in, at the end of the year with work and stuff but to just feel like I wasn't putting the work into my business that I was for those two months when I saw all that growth it really makes me feel bad about myself and how I'm like running my business. And I don't wanna to be too hard on myself because I do have a lot of late nights and I do like do this with my free time and I do put a lot of like effort and work in, but I don't want anymore, or at least this year, I don't want to let my job get in the way of like my dreams. So this year I really want to like get back to staying up until midnight, editing a video every single day to post on social media, being very consistent with YouTube and getting back to posting one collection a month because that's what I used to do and I did not do that last year. In the beginning I did and then once we got to about half the year toward the end of the year I had maybe one new collection and that is not what 
I used to do that I know I can do better. I just can't let like me having to have a job get in the way anymore. And I have to just like commit to suffering temporarily and pulling a lot of late nights. And honestly, I need to get back to exercising because I know that's also a big source of me being tired all the time. But anyway, this year I want to just really get back to getting in a routine of everything and just not letting outside things get in the way of this because this is what really matters to me and what's important to me and what I want to do for a living. So yeah, it's the first week of the new year and I have some orders to make but also I'm going to start making pieces for the new collection and for restocking the website. I'm going to start with wax carving today. I have a ring that I need to make and then I have some earrings that I'm going to make for the new collection and a necklace. I think I'm just gonna keep going until I need to stop. I think today mostly will be wax carving and then tomorrow I should be casting at least the pieces that I finished and finishing up the ring so that I can mail out the ring for actually one of my old co-workers and I'll be mailing that to England for her. Anyway, I will stop rambling and I hope you guys had a really good holiday and that you all have a really good new year. And if there's something that you're wanting to like, commit to or to start, or I'm assuming if you're here, you might be wanting to start making jewelry. It is really hard to do it with a full-time job, but it's absolutely possible. And do not let like being tired from work stop you or having a full-time job stop you because you you can do it and you will suffer and you will lose sleep. But if it's what you truly want, I really do think that we can make it happen. Okay, so I just finished the first ring and this is, I'll insert a photo of what this ring normally looks like, but this is the Catalina ring and it has a little green peridot in it. Um, but this is one that someone ordered and I love making this ring. This one is available on my website and I hand shape it every single time. So every ring is a little bit different, but it's very unique. Now that I'm done with this ring, I'm going to start on the two necklaces that I'm gonna be making, and I think I'm gonna cast those tomorrow and then continue working on other pieces just because I really need to get this ring out. I'm gonna keep working and filming, and I think this vlog is gonna go into tomorrow. So I'm starting the necklace. I recently started doing this when I work with more than one stone. I like to take sticky tack and place it on a flat surface. It, I feel like metal works best because then I can lift it up really easily, but I use some sticky tack to put the stones in the orientation and in the pattern that I want, and then I lay the wax over the back of it. And the reason why I like to lay it over the back of the stone, well that wax makes a full impression of the back of the gemstone. And that way when I set the stones, the seat is so exact that the stone does not rock side to side. So that's how I've started this necklace. So this is the start of the necklace and I just put the wax around the front and cut out the basic shape of the necklace and now I need to retexture it, re like soften the edges and 
create the bezel around the top of each stone and then make the bail. But first I'm gonna go make dinner. I'm gonna make some chicken marsala for Isaac and Tom and then I will come back in here later tonight and finish up this necklace. And then tomorrow, I think early in the morning, I'll finish up the last necklace and then those are the ones that we will cast together. I think I'll see you in a little bit, but if not, I'll see you tomorrow. So I was up until about 3 a.m. making this pendant and this other pendant. And so I woke up this morning at 10, <laughs> a lot later than I wanted to, but it's Sunday. So I just woke up and I put them on the sprue base and I'm about to invest these, which has a two hour wait time. So I'm gonna pour the investment over this to create the mold. And then I will be casting these in silver today. So I'm putting the flask around the base and you wanna make sure that your pieces aren't touching the sides. I believe you have to have like at least an eighth of an inch from the flask to your piece. And I will show you what that looks like on the inside. And it's touching. Okay, so I'm gonna have to adjust my pieces in there because one of them is touching the wall. So that's not gonna work. sprue over a little bit just to give it some room on the side I don't think that's a problem but let's just lean it a little bit just to give it a little more wiggle room all right so I just leaned it over slightly just to give it a little more wiggle room on the side so let's see if that helps at all if not I'll have to cut the tree off of the space and use a bigger flask which I don't want to do because that would require more investment. Perfect. So now that ring is no longer touching the wall. I don't know if you can see, let me turn the light on. So I don't know if you can see in there, but that ring is no longer touching the wall. So we are going to tape this up and mix the investment and pour it in. You wanna make sure that you get your tape as far down to the bottom as possible and that you push the tape along the flask really well because if you guys saw my video of the first time that I ever cast it, my investment spilled out from the bottom, <laughs> which is not a good thing, um, but there was investment like all the way pouring out of my flask. And I always tape up a little bit above the top of the flask because whenever you are investing, you put it on the vacuum table, it's gonna start to bubble and the investment rises and it can spill over the top of your flask as well. So taping it just above will catch whatever investment bubbles over the top. And then, just because I am traumatized, I'm gonna add one more piece of tape at the bottom. Whenever I cast, I pull up my little chart that shows me what size flask. It says like based on what size flask you're using, this is how much investment and this is how much um, water to use. I will link this in my, well, I need to find it on the internet again. I had screenshotted it. Somehow I will link this for you guys if you are casting, um, but it just tells you how much water to investment that you need. So this flask is a two and a half diameter flask and it is two and a half inches tall. So I use 114 milliliters of water and 10 ounces of investment powder. So that's what I'm gonna measure out right now. So this little measuring cup is 118 millimeters, which I mean is close enough for me. It's off by four millimeters, but I will take it. So you can't just use tap water for this. You have to use distilled water. 
So I just get my distilled water from Walmart. It's really important to put your respirator on because this investment is toxic to your lungs. So put that on before you measure out your investment. So you wanna have your timer ready because as soon as I pour the investment into the water, that's when the timer starts. So you wanna start a timer for eight minutes and I'm gonna pause it until I'm ready. My bowl weighs six ounces, so I need to measure out 16 ounces of investment. All right, so now I'm going to pour my water, or pour my investment into my water and start my timer. So let me slide this back. And then I'm gonna use my mixer to mix this up. Start my timer. And I'm gonna mix for three minutes. Now I'm going to put it on the vacuum table. So when you pour, you want to pour up against the wall and not directly on your pieces. Because you don't want to knock them over. I'm going to pour as much as I can in there, but I don't want to waste any time. So. Once it starts to pour slowly, I just lift it up and then put it back on the vacuum table because now you have to get more bubbles out. Once I put the flask in the kiln to start the burnout process, uh, that takes about eight hours and we had a lot of snow today here in Idaho, so we just drove around for most of the day looking at all the snow. But I do have pieces I needed to make, so I did make sure I came back down here. I have about two hours and 43 minutes left for, for the kiln to be on. The furnace takes about 45 minutes to melt the silver. And so I will turn the kiln on whenever the timer is on the last 40 minutes. Let me turn the dryer off one second. Okay, so. So in the last 40 minutes, I will turn the furnace on and measure out the silver. And so it'll probably be, be about 9.30 whenever I pour the silver and, and cast. I think I'm gonna stay up really late tonight so I can finish that ring and package it and have it shipped out tomorrow. I'm so excited to make that necklace. I wanna work on that one first so badly, but I won't. I will make the order first. I'm working on some earrings right now. I had started these a few days ago, so I'm almost done with them. Obviously, like you can't really tell what these are gonna be like whenever they're done, but I will insert a photo of what the finished product is. I have made these in the past and they sold very quickly and I never made another pair again. So I'm gonna make two for the shop update. If you guys wanna see my jewelry, I do have my website linked in the description so you can check out some of the stuff that I make, but these I'm gonna add back to the website to update those earrings. I'm gonna make another pair of earrings here in a second. They are these like peridot, I think they're coffin shaped earrings. Hang on, let me find some wax so I can stick this on here and show you. I wanna put them in like a drippy piece of silver, like a long irregular piece of silver. So this is a peridot, kind of a coffin-y shape, really small but a beautiful little dot of green. First I was gonna make these into some studs, but instead I think I want some like long droppy earrings with these just either stuck at the top or stuck toward the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and get started again and I'll try and zoom you in as best as I can. I'm about to start these earrings and I was gonna start them on this surface but honestly I'm not sure. I think I might want to start it on something even more flat like with this not in the way. So I finished one of the Peridot earrings. I ended up doing a YouTube live for them and just answering some of y'all's questions 
And now the kiln has 45 minutes left, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure out how much silver I need to melt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the furnace and get that started, because it takes about 35 to 40 minutes for it to melt and get to the right temperature. Then I'm gonna finish up the second earring. I'm just trying to decide what like earpiece I want the earring to be, if I want it to be a stud, on a hook, on a threader, I don't know. So I might even do like a two piece so that it like dangles more, but I'm not super sure yet. So I'm gonna prep the silver and then I'm gonna finish those earrings and then I will cast and I think that will be the end of tonight's video. Let's go measure out some silver. So this is where that photo comes in handy of when we weighed our wax. So when I weighed my wax, it was 3.025 grams. So I'm gonna go use my calculator. I will link the calculator in the description as well, but this will tell me how much metal I need to weigh out versus how much wax I have. My wax, metal, wax to metal calculator. And then I just type in how much wax I had. So it was 3.025 grams. 3.025 grams of wax and then I tell it that I want to use sterling silver and then calculate and it will tell me how much silver to weigh out. I need 31.67 grams which I always like to round up just a little bit because I'd rather have too much silver than not enough. So I'll probably do maybe like 31.8 or even 32 grams wouldn't be a bad idea. Always weigh your little cup first. This is 13 grams. So if I needed 31 grams, then I want 44 grams. So you always want to be really careful when pouring your silver in or any of your metals because this is just a graphite crucible and if you let it like bounce off it might chip pieces inside. So you got to be really careful. I've read that these crucibles are only really good for like seven uses. I think I'm coming up on that many. I'm not 1000%, I haven't really been counting. but. Honestly, it looks fine to me. If you guys know how many times you can really use this, if I can use it more or less, let me know. I do have a spare, I just haven't, you know, cracked it open. So when it comes to the temperature of the furnace, with silver, I cast it at 1,000 degrees, and with 10 karat gold, I also have been casting it at 1,000 degrees. Both have worked really well for me in the past. My kiln get the flask to a thousand degrees as well, and I try and let it sit at a thousand degrees for at least 30 minutes to sometimes an hour. I haven't noticed a difference either way, but no less than 30 minutes. Let it sit at a thousand degrees for 30 minutes. Once it reaches a thousand degrees, I let it stay there and I don't take it out until it's been there for at least 30 minutes. I did cast one time when it hadn't been at a thousand degrees for 30 minutes. It maybe been like 20 or 15 and I was like rushing myself and I had a lot of porosity on that one. So I really try and be as patient as I can and I wait the 30 minutes or 45 minutes and I haven't had any problems then. So I think that was really my main, my main issue. I guess when I have had issues, the problem was either I didn't let it sit at the thousand degrees long enough or I didn't have my metal hot enough and other ones were I completely missed the flask when I poured, which is like my fault. That was me, not, you know, the science of it all. But I, I think I was like kind of panicking and rushing and I poured and only a little bit got in the flask, but the rest went all over my table. So. Yeah, just really take your time. I'm gonna put this crucible in and turn on the furnace and yeah. Also, I wanna say whenever I did miss the um, pouring the metal into the flask in the vacuum table, it was also because whenever I put my crucible into the furnace, I didn't have the pouring spout facing 
the direction that I was pouring. So whenever I opened it and I grabbed it, I kind of fumbled with like needing to turn in the direction that I think I had it pointing upwards. So anyway, do yourself a favor and just face it. Go ahead and face it to where um, the direction that you're going to be pouring. I will be putting some borax flux in this once it gets a little bit hotter I put some flux in there and then I swish it around and that just helps the metal melt even more before maybe five minutes before I pour it into flask before I actually cast. So it's already at a thousand degrees I don't need to do anything and I'm really glad that the gold that I cast is the same temperature as the silver so I don't have to keep swapping it back and forth. But yeah, that's just going to heat up so once the top number matches the bottom number, we are good to go. So I'm about to cast. I always get so nervous and I don't know why because I've done this more than 10 times now but I don't know if it'll ever stop making me nervous. So I do though always try and like intentionally like calm my nerves because not only can being nervous make you make a mistake but it can also get you hurt. So deep breath. I got this. I can do it. Everything is going to go perfectly. Put my glasses on. I don't know if that completely worked because as you saw, I missed a little bit. Some of that went over the side. <sighs> I don't know. That's why you can't be nervous when you do this. So the only way to know if that worked or not is to quench it. I'm hoping that at least the ring that got ordered or like filled completely. But I don't know because that's a pretty good amount of silver on the side. So as you can see, a little bit spilled over the edge came out really quickly once I completely turned the crucible upside down. Let's quench it and cross our fingers that me over measuring a little bit will have made up for that little spill. Lord, I feel like that's a lot of silver. Oh, there's some steam. I need more water in the bucket. This is a really good example why over measuring your silver is kind of a good thing. It did break off the little sprue right here, but the ring cast fully and so did all of the necklaces. So we got really lucky this time. Again, like I said, right before I even cast, it's really important for you not to be nervous and to really take your time when you pour because you might have to start everything all over again if you don't. I'm so glad that everything worked. Anytime that happens, I get like this sick feeling in my stomach because that's like hours or days worth of work just to for it to be ruined in like a moment. Like I said, it's really hard not to get nervous doing that. Like you're you know it's a big moment you've made all of these things for this moment and you're dealing with hot metal and like you know these weird claw things and you just know it this is your moment and so I just get so nervous every time but thankfully everything turned out great so I'm gonna end the studio vlog here and hopefully I will have photos up for you guys so you can see how these pieces turned out thank you for hanging out with me this weekend and I will see you next Friday bye guys